A New York City jury is back deliberating in the NRA civil corruption trial. State Attorney General Letitia James is accusing the organization and its top executives, including former CEO Wayne LaPierre, of financial misconduct and corruption. She's seeking tens of millions of dollars in damages for the individual defendants. Our own Errol Barnett is outside of the courthouse in Manhattan. Errol, good to see you on this Wednesday. So prosecutors say that executives were caught with their, quote, hands in the cookie jar. Walk us through the evidence that was laid out over the six-week trial. Hey, Delana, great to see you from Lower Manhattan. You're absolutely right. The evidence in this case uh, includes financial records and testimony from former executives. But in the words of Attorney General Letitia James, who brought forward this case, it's really about excessive spending. What she says is fraud, greed, and abuse. And while the NRA and a number of top executives are defending themselves, the most high-profile person being accused here is the organization's former CEO, Wayne. LaPierre, who led the organization for some three decades and stepped down before this trial um, moved forward. Um, what prosecutors say is that they've used the phrase that he was basically using the NRA as his personal slush fund. They described it as Wayne's World, if you can remember that movie, uh, I think from the <laughs> 90s. Uh, but they say, no, it was not party time excellent. Let me break down for you some of the spending they say Wayne LaPierre took on his own behalf of donor money. They say he spent $11 million on private jet flights around the world, half a million dollars on trips to and from the Bahamas over a three-year period and $135 million in a vendor contract, a vendor who uh, then um, gifted Wayne LaPierre with international trips to places like India, uh, the United Arab Emirates and elsewhere, and the use of this vendor's massive luxury yacht. And the executives, um, the state's lawyer, is arguing that just because these executives said they're sorry, to go back to your analogy, doesn't mean that they didn't have their hands in the cookie jar uh, of those donations from, from people all around the country. Yeah, Errol, this is a really interesting case because in some ways it's LaPierre and these executives versus the NRA. And in the case of LaPierre, he conceded that mistakes were made, but his lawyers argued that this trial is actually a witch hunt. What were some of the main arguments in the defense? That's right. The NRA is saying that nothing untoward has happened and they've tried to improve their finances since they were made aware of some of these bizarre accounting practices. But they point to Letitia James specifically, their lawyers have, in saying that, look, she's a Democrat and that when she brought this case forward in 2020, she actually aimed to have the NRA completely disbanded and that really there's a political motivation behind all of this. Now, the judge overseeing this uh, case, uh, Mr. Cohen, he uh, prevented the NRA from being disbanded disbanded and said they could move forward um, and target individual members. But some of the state's own witnesses are former NRA executives who were effectively whistleblowers. And they said when they tried to raise these very strange accounting practices within the organization, they were rebuffed and excluded and ultimately kicked out of the organization. Right now, the jury, which is made up of three men and three women, are still deliberating over what to do after closing arguments. They've asked for transcripts. Uh, this is the, uh, they've been in deliberation for now a third day and have not yet come to a conclusion, but they'll need to decide which side is more accurate and what the repayment or damages may be. All right, Errol Barnett, thank you.